Hi, welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, my lesson is on writing and graphing equations of proportional relationships. Our objectives today are that you will write the equation of a proportional relationship from a table or a graph, you will graph a proportional relationship from a given equation, and you will identify the constant proportionality from an equation. So if you have not watched my previous video to this in the playlist, I would suggest you go there to talk about proportional relationships and how they look on a graph. Here's the question for today's lesson. How can you represent a proportional relationship with an equation? So let's talk about that. An equation of a proportional relationship, and it looks like this, y equals k times x. So a proportional relationship that is represented by a line on a graph can be written in this form using y, k, and x, where k represents the constant of proportionality. So this is probably your first introduction to a linear equation, and that's what this is. It's the equation of a line, and we have an x, an input, and y is your output, which you'll learn more and more about those as you proceed through your classes. But today we're going to focus on the fact that it's written in this form. You always have a y equal to a value times x. And this value is our constant of proportionality. When now we're going to introduce one more vocabulary word, direct variation. So direct variation is what we call the relationship between two variables that can be expressed as an equation in this form, y equals k times x where k cannot be 0. If k were 0, it would be 0 times x, which would be 0, and we just have y equals 0, and that's not a proportional relationship. So you need a y, you need an x, and x has to have a coefficient that represents the constant of proportionality. And we call that a direct variation. So here it is, y equals k times x, we still have our constant proportionality, and here are some facts that you should know. A direct variation always represents a proportional relationship. So when we say direct variation, what you're doing is you're looking at this equation. That equation represents a direct variation. It represents, it's the graph, a line, and it's a graph, and it represents the proportional proportional relationship. So keep that in mind. The direct variation is the equation of the line and the line is of the graph is representing the proportional relationship. Okay? The proportional relationship can always be written as a direct variation. So if you're given a table of values that show a proportional relationship, I'm going to show you today how to turn that into an equation to represent the direct variation. So it all connects. A direct variation equation must be able to be written in the form y equals k times x, where each variable can have an x on, only an exponent of 1. So y has an invisible exponent of 1 here, and so does x. So if it cannot be solved, we call that solving for y. If it cannot be rearranged and rewritten algebraically so that it's y equals a number times x, then it's not a direct variation. There can only be one numerical value in the equation, which is k, your constant of proportionality. So the only number you will see when you see this equation will be your k, your constant of proportionality, and it needs to be being multiplied to x. So k times x. All right, so let's look at identifying a direct variation, which is, again, the equation of a line representing a proportional relationship. So we have y equals 17x, reminding you that if it's a direct variation, it's y equals a number times x. It's got to be written in this form where that number is your constant of proportionality. So we're going to put them in two categories, a direct variation and not a direct variation. So when I look at this, it's y equals 17 times x. That is a direct variation because it's in that form, y equals k times x. So our constant of proportionality here would be 17. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the direct variation box. Now let's look at our second choice. 
I'm going to identify right here and point out to you that this is y equals 3 times x squared. Well, because the exponent of x is something other than 1, what's 2, this is not a direct variation. Remember, the exponent has to be 1, and which is invisible when you're looking at these equations. So now here, go to our third equation. We have 8y equals x. Well, here's the challenge. Students often want to jump right in and say, oh, no, 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 it's 8 times y, so it's not. But let's look at something. We need to see if we can get y all by itself. We've learned some algebra now by solving some equations. So this is 8 times y. The inverse of multiply is to divide. So if we divided each side by 8, which in algebra we can also multiply by the reciprocal. So let's multiply by the reciprocal, which is 1 over 8. Any number times its reciprocal is 1. So 1 over 8 times 8 is 1. But if I multiply this side by 1 over 8, I must multiply the right side by 1 over 8. When I do that, I'm left with y on the left side, and x times 1 eighth, and remember it's commutative, I can rearrange it, is 1 eighth times x. So by doing this, using the multiplication property of equality, I know that I can multiply both sides by the same value. Now I've rewritten this equation, and y equals 1 eighth, times x is an equivalent equation to this. Therefore, this is a direct variation because I can transform it and write it in that form. So that is a direct variation. So be careful. All right, let's look at our last one. I'm going to look at this, and our x term has an exponent of 3. So therefore, it is not a direct variation because the exponent is not 1. And remember, even though it's invisible, there's a 1 here. All right, now it's your turn. I've given you four equations, and you're going to classify it either as a direct variation or not a direct variation. I've reminded you that a direct variation is in this form, so go ahead and pause the video now and decide where you're putting these four equations. Come back when you're ready to check your work. Welcome back. All right, let's start with our first one. So I'm looking at it, it's solved for y. We know that it's y equals something, and instead of being 3 multiplied by x, it's 3 divided by x. So therefore, it's not a direct variation because I can't divide by x. All right, let's look at the next one. y equals a number value times x. Don't be fooled, k can be a fraction or a decimal, so that's a direct variation. Our third equation is y divided by x. We need to see if we can solve this for y. The inverse of divide by x would be to multiply by x. So if I multiply x on the left, I must multiply it on the right. x divided by x is 1, leaving me y equals 9x. This is a direct variation because it's y equals k times x. So we're going to put that, and remember, I'm leaving this in the form it was given to me. All right, and we have one more left. I look at this x term, and it has an exponent of 5. So therefore, it is not a direct variation. All right, let's move on to writing an equation. So you're going to write the equation of the direct variation if the graph is a proportional relationship. We're asked here to identify the constant proportionality and write an equation that represents the line. Because we're being asked for the constant proportionality, the instructions are pretty much telling you that it is a proportional relationship, but I can also go and check that it passes through the origin so I know the line represents a proportional relationship. So now I need to identify k, our constant of proportionality, and as we've learned in the previous video, k is a ratio of any y-coordinate over its x-coordinate. So let's identify this point that they've given us on the line, and that's the ordered pair 2, 4. So when x is 2, y is 4. So we're going to go over here and put that in for k. So our y value is 4, our x value is 2. So 4 to 2 is our ratio, which can be simplified to 2. So now we're going to make, write our equation, because that's our second step, write the equation that represents this line. And because it's a proportional relationship, we know we can write it as a direct variation. y equals the constant of proportionality times x. So we're going to take our constant of proportionality and put it in for k. 
So here we have y equals 2x, and that is the equation that represents this line. Now you know how to write an equation. So it's your turn. You're going to identify the constant proportionality and write the equation that represents the line. Please pause now and come back when you're done. Welcome back. Let's go over our solution. So the first thing I'm going to do is remind you that k is a ratio of any y-coordinate over the x-coordinate of any point of a line that is proportional. This passes through the origin, so it's a proportional relationship. So let's identify this ordered pair. We're going over to 7 and up to 4. So this ordered pair is 7, 4. So we're going to write that as our ratio. Our y-coordinate is 4. Our x-coordinate is 7. So our constant proportionality is 4 sevenths. Now we're going to write the equation that represents our line, our direct variation, y equals k times x. We've identified k to be 4 sevenths, so we replace that k with 4 sevenths. And the equation of the line is y equals 4 sevenths x. Now there's another way that we could use this equation. We can use any equation that we've been given in this form, y equals kx, to graph the line. Because we now know that it's a graph of a direct variation is the graph of a line that passes through the origin and it's a proportional relationship. So let's go ahead and talk about how to do this using a table. This is one strategy. So the first thing I want to know or identify and talk about is that we know that the origin is a point on our line because if it's a direct variation, which it is, it needs to pass through the origin. So I'm going to plot that point and I'm going to put that value in our table, 0, 0. That's one of our ordered pairs that goes on our graph. Now I'm going to put the values 1 and 2 in my table just because they're the next easiest numbers to work with mathematically. Because a line is infinite, you can put any numbers you want in this x. You could put fractions, decimals, negative numbers, positive numbers, large numbers, small numbers. It doesn't matter. You get to pick. So you didn't have to use 1 and 2. You can use anything you want. So what we're going to do with this value is we're going to go up to our equation and we're going to replace x with the value 1. So it looks like this. We want to find out what y is equal to. y is equal to 3 times x. So if we're saying x is 1, now we can put that in, and 3 times 1 is 3. So that means when x is 1, y has to be 3. Now we're going to graph that point, 1, 3. All right, now let's do the same thing for 2. We're going to take 2 and put it in for x. So that gives us y equals 3 times 2. y is equal to 6. Put that in our table, and this is a third ordered pair. So 2, 6, and graph your line. So you really only need two ordered pairs to graph a line, two points on your coordinate plane, and then you can connect with a line. But I encourage students to do that third point just as a point of for a check. So if you put that third point on and you couldn't connect it with a ruler, meaning it wasn't a straight line, then you know you might have made a math error. Okay, so this is how we use this linear equation. We can also call it a rule. It's a rule. What do you do to get y? It's 3 times any x value. Now it's your turn. I would like you to complete this table and graph this equation. Go ahead and pause and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going to start out by, we know that this is a direct variation, so it's going to pass through the origin, plot that origin point, and fill in our table. So that's one of our ordered pairs, and I'm going to use 1 and 2 again. You might have used something different, but we will have the same line on our graphs if we did the same work right. So we're going to take 1 and put it in for x. So y is equal to 4 times 1. That means y is equal to 4 when x is 1. So there's my ordered pair, 1, 4. 1, 4. Now we're going to put 2 in for x. So y is equal to 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is 8. Put it in our table. And we have an ordered pair, 2, 8. And that's going to go off my graph right about there. And connect it with your line, and there you have it. 
Now we're going to graph using the constant of proportionality. So here's a second strategy to graph the line when you're given an equation. So first we're going to identify the constant of proportionality and then we're going to graph the equation. Reminding you that a direct variation is written in the form y equals k times x and k is the constant of proportionality and here it's 3. So since k is 3, we have to remember that k is a ratio of y to x. So I've gone ahead and plotted my origin on my graph because now that I've identified my constant of proportionality, I've been asked to graph the equation. We know that because it's a direct variation that the line has to pass through the origin, so we know that's one point we need. We're going to get our second point using our constant of proportionality. So we know that k is a ratio of a y-coordinate to an x-coordinate. So if we go ahead and rewrite this as a ratio, 3 to 1, remember any whole number has a denominator of 1, we can identify that x is 1 and y is 3, and there's a relationship there, 1, 3. So that's an ordered pair on our graph, 1, 3. And now we have two points, and we can graph our line. So again, identify your constant proportionality. You know one point on your graph has to be the origin. And then take your constant proportionality and use what we learned. We're going backwards. We used this before. We used the point to find the constant proportionality. Now we're using the constant proportionality to identify the point. Your turn. Go ahead and pause. Identify the constant proportionality and graph the equation and come back when you're ready. Welcome back. So our constant proportionality is the value being multiplied to x when it's solved for y. So here we have it, 2 fifths. So k is equal to 2 fifths. Reminding you that k is a ratio of any ordered pair that is a proportional relationship y to x. So that means in this instance to get our ordered pair x and y, x has a value of 5 when y is 2. So here's my ordered pair, 5, 2. So let's graph our origin. We know it's going to pass through the origin and then the point 5, 2. And connect it with a line. And there you have your line of the graph of y equals 2 fifths x. So that's how you write and graph equations of proportional relationships. I'm so glad you joined me today, and I hope this helped and gave you some good practice, and I hope you'll come back soon here at The Magic of Math, where we continue to master math one video at a time. Have a great day.